Good morning, Year 9. Um, a new face for you today. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Miss Corbishley. Um, I teach English and Media. Um, Mrs Nunnally will be teaching a different year group. So this half term, I will be taking you through some poetry for the first four weeks, and then we'll be looking at some um, spoken language um, work as well. So, first thing that we're going to do um, is look at some contemporary poetry. So each week we're going to look at poetry from a different time period. So this week we're going to look at contemporary poetry. Contemporary simply means of its time. So for us that's 21st century, what we would call modern poetry. Okay, the poet we're going to look at this morning is a wonderful young woman called Warsan Shire. Um, now she actually was born in Somalia, but she moved to Britain when she was one, I think. Um, she came here as a refugee. Those of you who might know anything about Somalia will know it's a war-torn country. Um, people do leave there under quite harrowing and traumatic circumstances. Um, this poet, Warsan, she's actually collaborated with Beyonce, if you know um, of Beyonce's film Lemonade. Uh, Shire's poetry features in that, it's been adapted for the screen, she's won loads of poetry awards, um, I do recommend reading some of her poetry. Um, now the poem of hers we're going to look at today is called Home. Um, before we start reading it, um, let's just have a think about the title. It's always good to think of the title um, of the poem before we start reading. And home, to us, has sort of connotations of safety, doesn't it? Home is where the heart is. There's no place like home. Um, it should be a place of safety. So straight away, our expectations are set up, aren't they? Um, is this poet going to subvert those expectations? Is she going to show home in a completely different way? Or is she going to show us home as maybe an extended metaphor, um, a place, a person, something that makes her feel safe? I'm not going to read the whole poem because it's quite long just going to do the first three verses, or stanzas rather. So here we go. Home. No one leaves home unless home is the mouth of a shark. You only run for the border when you see the whole city running as well. Your neighbours running faster than you, breath bloody in their throats. The boy you went to school with who kissed you dizzy behind the old tin factory is holding a gun bigger than his body. You only leave when home won't let you stay. No one leaves home unless home chases you, fire under feet, hot blood in your belly. It's not something you ever thought of doing until the blade burnt threats into your neck. So is this a happy, safe place? No. Okay, there are lots of um, images of danger and violence here, aren't there? We've got words like shark, bloody, um, a gun, um, there are lots of others. Oh yeah, the, the blade burning threats into your knife. Okay, so this is a poem about people running, fearing for their lives. Okay, two um, different techniques we're going to look at today. Metaphor and personification. I hope you did the work that Mrs Thurlby put up yesterday on vocabulary, because this will re hopefully have reminded you what metaphor and personification are. So, the first metaphor I've picked out is from those first two lines of the poem, no one leaves home unless home is the mouth of a shark. There you go, that's what a mouth of a shark looks like. Okay, unless home is the mouth of a shark. She's comparing home to, to that. <laughs> Would this be a safe place to be? Hmm, let's think about it. No. So um, this metaphor, comparing home to a shark's mouth, is one full of violence and danger, isn't it? If you've seen the film Jaws or any other films about sharks, they have this reputation, don't they? With their razor sharp teeth attacking you. So straight away, the first two lines, we've got this violent image. What about personification? Did you spot any personification? Where something that is inanimate is given human feelings, attributes, emotions, behaviours, actions. Okay, there's a couple here. No one leaves home unless home won't let you stay, unless home chases you. Now, home, if we think about a building, bricks and mortar, 
Can that prevent you from staying? Can a building chase you down the street? No. This is kind of a bit like a horror film in a way, isn't it? Almost like a poltergeist saying, get out. Um, home won't let you stay and it chases you. Doesn't have to just be a house. Home could be her town, her city, her country, perhaps. So it's so dangerous. Not only is it like a shark's mouth that's going to bite her, bite her arm or leg off or even kill her. Perhaps it's actually telling her to go and it's chasing her away. You can't stay here. You have to go. You have to go. Um, and of course, we know she's from Somalia, a war-torn country. There are lots of images of war. So you have to leave. You've got to go. There's this kind of threat, like the place has come alive and is pushing her away. So we've read a bit of the poem. Then what do we have to do? Well, you will be having to analyse. Now, I'm not going to ask you to write any analysis today. If you want to and you want to send it to me, that'd be brilliant. But we're just going to have a look at how to analyse. Um, so once you've picked out your couple of first couple of quotes, you can then look at it in more detail. So let's look at the metaphor and the personification. Let's look at the metaphor first. So you need to plan what you're going to write. I always say to my classes, write a lot about a little. And this quote we've got here, mouth of a shark, four words. Mouth of a shark, this is our metaphor. This is our starting point. You must always start rooted in the text. So the poet uses the metaphor, mouth of a shark, to describe home. What are the connotations of that? So the connotations of the mouth of a shark, we just looked at that picture, didn't we? So therefore there are connotations of danger, fear, she's gonna be attacked, you know, violence, death possibly. So the poet uses the metaphor mouth of a shark to describe her home. This carries with it connotations of danger, fear, attack. The effect of this is that she is afraid of home. So the effect is the effect on the reader. It's also the effect the poet is trying to create, the meaning they're trying to convey. The effect is she's afraid of home. Home has become a dangerous place for her. It's no longer this sanctuary of safety that we expect it to be. It's become dangerous. Now, to get loads of marks, to think deeply, the final stage is to broaden out your influence. So you start zoomed right in on those four words, mouth of a shark, and then you talk about the connotations of that and then you explore the effect of that. And then ask yourself, so what? So what? What one person is afraid of home and they're like running for their lives? Broaden it out. It's not just one person in the poem, is it? Um, the whole city is running. Even people that she used to know, like this boy at school, he's now become some sort of soldier. He's got a massive gun. Perhaps he's become a terrorist or a sort of guerrilla warfare, child soldier. So let's broaden it out. Maybe it's not just her or her hometown or her city. Perhaps it's her whole country. Perhaps this is a comment on much wider um, problems in the world. So I've just written here, for some people, a place which should be a place of safety is actually a place of danger. And if you think about, if you follow the news, um, the way that refugees and immigrants have been spoken about um, by politicians or in newspapers or on social media, it's, it's been quite negative actually, hasn't it? Um, so perhaps one reason um, Warsan Shire wrote this poem is because she wants us to understand why people do leave their their home and, and come to another country. Um, perhaps she's telling us actually these people are fleeing from unimaginable danger. Perhaps she wants us to be a bit more sympathetic and a bit more empathetic um, to those people. Oh it's quite deep for a Tuesday. Okay so uh, what next? Well, once you've done metaphor, you move on to the next one. Here I've just picked out the personification of the uh, house chasing her away. So you then do the same thing, um, but for your next quote. So um, 
You would then say the poet also uses personification to describe the house as chasing her away. Um, and that's just a one word quote, but that's brilliant. Uh, what is the um, what are the connotations of that? It's as if the place that she knows and loves is pushing her away. If you're being chased, you're being pursued, you're being followed, possibly with the, a threat, you know, a danger again. So um, she's fleeing for her life here and she's not just running to something, she's running away from something and I think that's the point. She's not running towards safety, she's running away from danger. Almost like she doesn't care where she goes as long as she gets away from this situation. I think that's the point. It's, she's not being pulled towards something, she's being pushed away. Okay, the last thing, I just want to touch on this enjambment. Did you spot all the enjambment in that poem? No punctuation at the end of those lines of poetry. Let's just um, go back to the poem. Here we go. No one leaves home unless home is the mouth of a shark. You only run for the border when you see the whole city running as well. Your neighbours running faster than you, breath bloody in their throats. The boy you went to school with who kissed you dizzy behind the old tin factory is holding a gun bigger than his body. You only leave home when home won't let you stay. <gasps> that is the first bit of punctuation, that full stop. The rest of it just runs on line to line to line, doesn't it? And that's the first chance you have to pause and catch your breath. So that enjambment, does it speed it up or does it slow it down? Speeds it up, doesn't it? Faster, 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 faster. Can't catch my breath, can't catch my breath. And if you think about it, the subject matter of that poem is that they are running. So the enjambment reflects what's actually happening in the poem. Those people are running and they're running out of breath and they're fleeing and they're going faster, 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 faster to get away. And the enjambment, actually, in the structure of the poem, it mirrors that, doesn't it? It runs in parallel to it, it reflects it. Um, and lots of poets use that um, in their structure in the uh, to reflect, um, or perhaps actually to contrast with the subject matter. Um, that's quite a lot of information. We'll look a bit more at enjambment and sejura in the next couple of weeks. Um, let's just move on. So, if you're feeling inspired, there is some broader reading you could engage with. And these are just three other poems that I thought I might point you to that might be of interest. Uh, the first one is by Benjamin Zephaniah. The British serves 60 million, and it's like a recipe for how do you create British. People. What does it mean to be British on this little island, <laughs> tiny island that we live on? Um, if you have a look for it on YouTube, actually, there's a nice video that some students made um, of the poem. It's quite good. Um, Simon Armitage is a, is a great poet. Um, I recommend him. Uh, this poem is called The Shout. It's about two boys at school who are doing a science experiment to see how far sound can travel. And one boy is shouting and the other boy has to raise his hand when he can hear it. And the boy who's shouting moves further and further and further away. And then sort of it goes to like 20 years later and it's quite tragic actually, but it's rather beautiful and lovely, very, very short. And Text by Carol Ann Duffy is another super short poem. It's about text messaging and it's actually short, like a text message is short and talks about thumbs being blurred because you're typing so quickly. Um, so that's another great, poem. So I recommend you read those three. Um, you don't need to actually write up any analysis today. If you want to, you can. What you must make sure you do though is Mrs. Thelby's vocab from yesterday because tomorrow on Show My Homework you're going to have a quiz on that vocabulary. It's just 10 key terms for analysing poetry. You need to make sure you know them. That is it for today. I've been talking for far too long. Um, I hope you have a good rest of your day. Let's hope this works on YouTube because the previous one didn't. Okay, any questions, do email me or drop me a message on Show My Homework. Bye.